Catherine, today I'm going to give you a list of books that I think you should have read by now. You may have read some of them or even all of them, but I don't know, so I'm going to read you the first line and tell you what they're about so I can get you interested. The first book on my list of books that you should have read by now is The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. If you really want to hear about it, the first thing you'll want to know is where I was born and what my lousy childhood was like. Well, how my parents were occupied and all before they had me. And all that David Copperfield kind of crap. But I don't feel like going into it. The book is narrated by a young man called Holden Caulfield and it's the time between the end of fall term and Christmas when he decides to go to New York for three days. The thing to look out for in this book is Holden's red hunting hat because it's my second favourite literary symbol ever. Holden Caulfield thinks you're a phony. Yeah, that's right. I'd just like to point out how simple and pretty the cover of this copy is. The second book is The Darkling by Stephen M. Irwin, Snow Fell. This book is about a man called Nick who returns home to Australia after the death of his wife, but he's still haunted by the death of his friend Tristram from 30 years ago. Soon after returning home, another boy disappears, and when he's found dead, Nick realises that this boy's death is very similar to Tristram's. He begins to look into it and he soon realises that it wasn't Tristram that was meant to die 30 years ago. I've only recently finished reading this book and the author is very fond of metaphors and he uses them very often. At the beginning it was slightly annoying but once you get used to it and get into the story it's very good. Don't go into the woods tonight who's sure of a big surprise. The next book is Life of Pi by Yann Martel. My suffering left me sad and gloomy. This book is about a 16 year old boy named Pi who after the sinking of a cargo ship is stuck on a lifeboat with a female orangutan, a hyena, a zebra with a broken leg and a 450 pound Bengal tiger. That, that's basically the book. The next book is Cloud Atlas by David Mitchell. Beyond the Indian hamlet, upon a forlorn strand, I happened upon a trail of recent footprints. This book is about six different people and how their lives are interlocked. It spans from the 19th century to a post-apocalyptic future and it skips between the six people and it's very clever because each of them have their own individual speaking style. There is a film of this, which is why it has Tom Hanks on the cover. But I haven't seen it so I can't recommend it to you, but if you have seen it please let me know if it's any good. The next book is The Lost Art of Keeping Secrets by Eva Rice. I met Charlotte in London one afternoon while waiting for the bus. This book is set in the 1950s and it's about a young woman called Penelope who longs to grow up and fall in love but various inconvenient things keep getting in the way. The story starts with her meeting another girl named Charlotte who she then forms a close friendship with. The next book is Time's End by B.R. Collins. I've had enough. This is about a young girl who feels out of place in her adoptive home and goes to the old house at the end of the street to get away from it. She goes there a lot as she thinks it's abandoned, but soon she meets the owner Oliver, who tells her a lot about the history of the house. The book then skips back to 1996 and we learn about the history of the house as it happens. The first half of the book in the modern day isn't as good, but the second half in the past is very interesting. And it has a beautiful cover. I know you're not meant to judge a book by its cover, but it's so pretty. The next book is Never Let Me Go by Kashuro Ishiguro. My name is Kathy H. This is a book about a girl named Kathy and her friends Ruth and Tommy who grew up in school together in the English countryside. The book then has Kathy at 31 and trying to come to terms with what has always been inevitable since starting the school. An unforgettable story of love, friendship and the fragility of life. So that's cheerful. There's a film of this one as well, but I also haven't seen that, so if you've seen it, let me know if it's any good. There are actors on the cover. Whenever there's actors on the cover of books, I always want to know what the original looked like. I've seen the original for Cloud Atlas, and it's really beautiful. But Tom Hanks' face has taken it over. Tom Hanks. The next book is To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. When he was nearly 13, my brother Jem got his arm badly broken at the elbow. The book is set in the 30s and it's about a black man on trial for the rape of a white girl in the deep south. A quote on the back of the book from The Independent says, No one ever forgets this book, and if you read it you'll see why. 
The last book and the one I'm recommending to you the most is The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. Gatsby? What Gatsby? In my younger and more vulnerable years, my father gave me some advice that I've been turning over in my mind ever since. Listen to it, it's like poetry. I'd also like to read you the epigram from this one because I feel it needs to be said. Then wear the gold hat if it'll move her, and if you can bounce high, bounce for her too. Till she cry, lover, gold-hatted, high-bouncing lover, I must have you. Which is a quote from the famous poet Thomas Park de Villiers. The book is narrated by a man called Nick Carraway who moves in next door to a man named Jay Gatsby. Gatsby is in love with a woman called Daisy who is married to a man named Tom Buchanan. Gatsby holds famous parties at his house every night in the hope that one day Daisy will turn up. She doesn't. Two things I'd like to say about the epigram, Catherine. One, Thomas Park Dinvilliers does not exist. And two, it mentions the word gold twice. Which is why it is so brilliant, because the book is basically about things that are made up and or golden. Things to look out for in this book is things that are gold, people wearing glasses and the green light at the end of Daisy's Dot, because that is my favourite literary symbol by far ever. So that is the end of my list of books that I think you should have read by now. And if you haven't read any of them, you know what to do. If you don't read all of them, at least read these two so you can read about Holden's Red Hunting Hat and the Green Light at the end of Daisy's Dock. I hope I've inspired some more books to go on your reading list, and I will be checking up that you have read these two, because you have to. It's just necessary to your well-being. Especially this one. That is all I have to say, so Catherine, I will see you next week. The Great Gatsby, because that's so good. <laughs>